back to another episode of the Movie Brothers. I'm Ant, this is Kev. As always, we got a great show lined up for you. Uh, we are reviewing the film Lucy for you today. Uh, Lucy, you got some explaining to do. <laughs> Kev, I didn't know you were Puerto Rican, man. Hey, man, <laughs> I'm black. We all got a little bit of something <laughs> in us, you know. True that, true that. You, you know, y'all know I got a little Indian in me, <laughs> as, as I'm sure you do, too. Uh, so it's all good. Uh, we are reviewing the film Lucy, which is rated R, has a runtime of one hour and 30 minutes. And this film is about a woman who gets caught up in a bad drug deal and is forced into a deadly drug run. This movie was directed by Luke Passan who brought us uh, The Professional, Leon The Professional. Mm -hmm. He also brought us La Femme Nikita. Yep. Uh, very good movies in there all right. Fifth Element. Yep. Um, it stars Scarlett Johansson, you know, the great Scarlett Johansson. Uh, Morgan Freeman, uh, who can read the phone book and make it interesting. Yes. And uh, Amar Waked. Uh, what do you say we take a look at the trailer? Let's do it. What happened? What did you do to my stomach? <laughs> What's going on? We've merely slipped a new package into your lower tummy, and you're going to transport something very special to us. We've all heard all of the scientific theories that postulate that the human being only uses at most 10% of their brain at any given point in time. Lucy basically tries to make us feel or understand that Scarlett Johansson, the title character, is capable of ultimately using all of her brain at any given point in time, which gives her otherworldly powers. Um, the premise feels dated, okay, because, you know, most of us or many of us know that that theory was disproven a long time ago. Uh, professor, <laughs> uh, I did not get the memo on that. <laughs> That was, that was new news to me. I don't know about y'all, but I hadn't heard that, I mean, that we could use more than 10%. Or, or maybe the bigger point is, I don't know if I've ever really cared to even look <laughs> well, into Well, I mean, and that brings, up, that brings up a good point, because the bottom line is that, you know, if we only use 10%, and there's really nothing that we can do about that, how much should we care yeah. that all we're using sure. is 10% of our brain if there's nothing that I can do to increase that? And, but... Really, the movie feels a little bit dated as a result of that, at least to me, because I did mm -hmm. know that that's a falsity, you know, that that's something that is not really true. But, you know, again, maybe that's just an issue with me, Ant. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ant. Luke Besson gives us another ode to feminism in this particular movie. All of his movies are typically imbued with very strong female characters, and this movie is no different, whether it is La Femme Nikita, uh, whether it's The Fifth Element, whether it's Leon the Professional, all the female characters are very strong. Same with this particular film. Yeah, um, Luke Besson, I, I feel like we've kind of come full circle here, Kev, with our show for our diehard fans out there. You know, our first episode, we covered The Family, which was directed by Luke Besson. It was horrible. Uh, this film, Lucy, is not as bad as that, but not too far from it, unfortunately. Um, it was all over the place. Um, the acting was fairly decent. You know, Morgan Freeman did his thing. Um, Morgan miss, Freeman can pretty much read the phone book and make it interesting. He can, but he needs to he needs to read something else though. <laughs> yeah. Could be because you know I miss the days of old when if you knew a certain actor was in a in a movie, mm -hmm. it, you knew it was going to be a banger. Right. And those days are long gone. Right. Um, we got Scarlett Johansson in this film. She's the star of the movie. Thumbs Thank up. God she carried it. Um, not her best performance in my my personal opinion. She was kind of hit and miss in a lot of her scenes, but. The hits were still strong enough to carry the movie. Yeah, I like how as she begins to use more of a brain power, you know, uh, she starts to become less human and much more robotic in her movements and the way that she speaks and her uh, 
interactions with other human beings. Um, and maybe that's Luke Besson giving us another one of his heavy-handed messages about, <laughs> you know, the proliferation of technology and how it's taking away our humanity. I don't know. But, you know, that is there. Uh, I didn't see it. <laughs> I, I like the subject matter, though. I mean, I understand your points. I think mm -hmm. it's great subject matter content to discuss, but it just did not come across on the screen for me. Uh, to really sum this thing up, this film is a bad version of Limitless. Uh, to really <laughs> lay it out for you. To be a bad version of Limitless means it had to be very bad because Limitless itself was not hey, that great. Limitless was off the chain. <laughs> and it was, I, I really enjoyed that film. So I don't know what you're talking about, Kevin. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, this movie, it starts off very, very strong. And I've never seen a movie before that just, it was a steady decline for me. <laughs> it's like as Lucy's brain power increased, mine decreased. Uh, something like that, but it just got dumber and dumber and dumber. Thank God it was only an hour and a half or, you know, who knows what would have happened. But, um, you know, Kev, you want to put some points on this thing, man? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, unlike Ant, I'm not going to be as hard on this particular movie. Uh, I feel like this will give you some things to uh, discuss and have a lively debate about, you know, with whoever you go to see the film with. Um, you know, like I said, it's not the brainiest thing out there, especially since, you know, like I said, the theory of whether or not we use 100% of our brain power has already been disproven or not. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the movie in itself is entertaining enough to make you want to talk about it at least a little bit. I think Scarlett Johansson does a good job in this movie, and I think that Luke Besson uh, is very heavy-handed in the way that he tries to hit us over the head with a sledgehammer with messages. With Message? <laughs> with images of uh, mammals being born, uh, very graphic images of mammals being born. Uh, I didn't need to see all that, and I don't really think that it added to the film in any way. I give this movie a 7 out of 10. Alright. Um, <laughs> this film for me was all over the place, as Kev mentioned. Um, it's rated R, which I can't exactly figure out why. Um, I've seen PG-13 movies that have more heavy content than what's in here, but that's neither here nor there. Quite a bit of violence. Uh, yeah, yeah, but... Scarlett Johansson uh, saves this, I guess you could call it, sort of say. She, she does. She carries the movie. She saves it. Uh, even though I said she was hit and miss, um, even what she did provide was strong enough to keep it keep me from rating this film a five. At the end of the day, I give it a six out of 10 because of uh, Scarlett's star power, her it factor. Um, so, you know, should you see it in a the theater? For me, no. Wait till it comes through cable and you're chilling on the couch. It's maybe worth a watch. There it is. Okay. All right. So be sure to like us on Facebook. Yep, or you can follow us on Twitter, at The Movie Brothers. And you sub can subscribe to this channel and pass the word. If y'all are watching this show, you're feeling on the show, tell your friends and family and have them check it out too. Um, we are, once again, The Movie Brothers. I'm Ant. This is Kev. And this is the place where we bring you nothing but the, the real, real on the, the real. real.